Good afternoon and welcome to Kaiser Music Session number three, entitled Common Audition Pieces for Low Brass. Today's session is being led by Dr. Leon. A little a quick bio about Dr. Leon. Global Music Award Silver Medal winner, Dr. Jose Leonardo Leon, is one of South Florida's most active and versatile bass and tenor trombonists and educator. Leon has worked with professional organizations and artists such as the Florida Grand Opera, the Miami Symphony Orchestra, the Babal Symphony Orchestra, the New World Symphony, Andrea Bocelli, and most recently with the hitman Foster and the Kravis Center Pops Orchestra. He received his Doctor of Musical Arts in Trombone Performance and Pedagogy under the direction of Dr. William Stanley at the University of Colorado Boulder College of Music. Dr. Leon is a proud Bach, Brass, and Con Selmer trombone performing artist. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Kaiser Music Series uh, master classes uh, via Zoom in this uh, unexpected uh, setting, but uh, very comfortable and beautifully worked and setting up uh, for all of you and for all the participants, especially. Uh, so today I want to focus on um, college audition repertoire and kind of a, a, a short version of the process I, I do in order to practice those, uh, those uh, excerpts or those pieces that are required for auditions. Um, I selected two of them because uh, be, under the criteria that these two are two of the most popular ones uh, that are required by most major universities and band programs and, and across the country. Uh, one of them is from the uh, Marco Bordoni, or uh, also AKA uh, Srot Chu. Um, I selected in the tenor trombone version is written as number four, okay? And, but as you know, there are many versions of this book and there are many versions for low brass as well. That version is probably very popular also among the phonium players and baritone players. And there's also the uh, Bel Canto Studies by Marco Bordoni, which is basically uh, the same book, just distributed differently. This is the version for tuba and bass trombone. Um, so I'm going to be first starting with this uh, in the in the tuba version, tuba and bass trombone version. Uh, number four is number one. Okay. So uh, just in case you are interested in in checking that out, I will be sharing uh, with you um, PDFs of the excerpts uh, on screen. So sometimes you are able to visualize what I'm explaining to you uh, in a better way. Also, uh, I have selected uh, Ride of the Valkyries uh, by Richard Wagner, which is uh, also a very common piece to be asked for low brass in many auditions, not only college auditions, but also in professional auditions of any kind, military, military band auditions, orchestral auditions, uh, Dallas Wind Symphony auditions, any type of auditions that, that you go out there and obviously college auditions as well. Um, the Wagner Valkyries, Ride of the Valkyries is a must. Okay, it's one of the it's one of those excerpts that could get you the position or could kick you out of the audition right away. Okay, so what we're going to do today is a little approach to practice and to master to be able to master both of them. I'm going to play a small example of the Marco Bordoni. I have selected a couple of PDFs. So to be a little bit more um, appealing to everybody and, and also to be um, more generalized to the entire low brass section, I'm going to show for you, I don't need this. This is the one I need. Okay, so 
I'm going to show you the tenor trombone part, which is the same for euphonium. And uh, it's easier to read uh, this for everybody, all members of the low brass section. Okay. Um, if I picture, if I show you, if I share the image of, uh, of the tuba slash bass trombone part, it's written very low. Uh, so I can, I can actually just show it to you so you know which one I'm talking about. This is the one I'm talking about. It's exactly the same one, just written an octave lower. So um, to have the picture more standardized so everybody can understand at once, uh, I'm gonna use the tenor slash euphonium part of the, of the road tube. So basically this is what the uh, committee is looking for. ended up performing uh, the entire number four, okay? Um, so if you notice in the piece, okay, you have phrases determined by the triple figure. You also have to make a distinction between those figures, between the triple figures and the duple figures represented by the dotted A followed by the 16 notes. Okay, what is the main issue that happens here? Usually when we have the combination of triplets and we have the combination with uh, dotted uh, eighth note followed by 16, okay? Well, also happens here when you have dotted quarter followed by eighth note, okay? This is a, a more square kind of rhythm, okay? It's a duple rhythm and these are more like a triple rhythm, okay? So the tendency is to acquire this triple feeling when you have triples all over the place, leading the majority of the phrases of a piece, and all of a sudden you have a daughter A followed by a 16. How many times have you guys heard your teachers or your band directors telling you, do not play ta ta ta, okay? That's making this duple sound triple. You need to subdivide 16 notes. Ta 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 ta, ta ta ta, ta ta ta. It's way different than ta ta ta, ta ta ta. But the problem here is when you have triple here, triple here, 
you're basically setting up, setting your mind up and your musicality up to this rhythm. And all of a sudden, you have this little uh, stumble right here that you have to make a distinction between this rhythm and this rhythm. So this one doesn't sound triple. Then is when it becomes tricky. Okay. Then you have pieces like uh, Wagner's Tonghauser. Uh, you have pieces, oh, like, you know, the Valkyries, we're going to see in a little bit, okay, um, in which you have immediately what I'm doing with my hands is what should be happening in your head. You should be triple it, triple it, pa pa sixteen, to be able to approach that following rhythm and then go back to triple. So this is the same thing that is happening here. So make sure that you let's take the first phrase. Here you have to subdivide eight notes. So let's do it again. So this rhythm doesn't sound triple. So that distinction needs to be heard. doesn't sound no okay i hope you are able to listen to the difference uh let me because it's about to rain and it's getting really dark in here even though the window is open let me turn on my light So you guys can hear, can see me better, okay? Because it's about to rain and it's getting dark outside. All right. So back to the back, back to the phrases here. So the committee is looking for that low brass player that is capable of performing this, making those di distinctions in rhythm clearly. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, uh, this video is probably going to be archived somewhere. So I hope Dr. Hayward is, is in, uh, or you guys get in touch with Dr. Hayward and and make sure that you're able to check this part again if you want to see my subdivision a little bit closer in detail so you need to listen to this and especially we need to sing okay so we need to have that distinction in here in order to translate that in our bell that is a simple concept um stated by maestro uh, arnold jacobs former tuba player of the Chicago Symphony for about 50 years, okay, 50 plus years. So um, he created this concept of song and wind for all uh, brass players. And the concept is very simple. This sound and anything that you want to produce with your instrument, you need to first have it well stated in your mind to be able to work physically in all the technique and everything that you need to work on, everything you need to work on with your instrument in order to translate that idea that you have up here out of the bell. So part of that is not only melodic lines, it's not only phrasing, it's not only referring to intonation, but it's also referring to rhythm. And rhythm also involves subdivision. Um, I, I'm sure 
many, many times you guys have heard about subdivision and, and talking about that you need to subdivide things. Well, this is one of the reasons, okay? This is one of the reasons. You really, really, really need to mentalize yourself to have this subdivision clear. Also for the very beginning, notice that these uh, road tube keys and a lot of them always start in the, uh, at the pickup node, okay? You need to make sure that the, that the uh, committee is clearly hearing that you're starting on a pickup note, okay? And you are not starting on a downbeat. There is a lot of mistake uh, from many musicians that I have seen in auditions, in low brass auditions, the musician plays this beginning like this. You are not giving any idea to the audience. If someone is looking at you and listening to you and doesn't know this piece, is going to think that, um, that you're playing on the downbeat. So give some sort of idea, okay? So look at the beginning again and listen. Okay, or some sort of, you know, some sort of idea that you give the audience the sense that you're starting on a pickup note. You don't need, you even, even without uh, measuring yourself or conducting yourself. The way you breathe is already giving the audience the sense of, Okay, incorporate the breathing into the music. Okay, the breathing needs to be in rhythm and needs to be part of the music. Okay, and we're going to talk about that uh, right now when I jump to the Valkyries. Okay, so with all this concept, blowing your air, blowing your air for a melodic line is way different than blowing your air for a more rhythmical and technical uh, required type of excerpt or piece, okay? So in this case, you would need to really have a steady airstream and moving forward, but without push, okay? It needs to be as relaxed as possible, even from the inhalation. Okay, your air needs to work, needs to move uh, flawless, and and you need to keep the air. Imagine that my hand right here is water coming out of a faucet, and the job of your tongue is touching lightly, touching that water, very gently, giving direction to to the air, to the water. Okay. Your tongue is the equivalent of the finger. Do not blow at the nose, blow through the phrase, okay? A lot of students have the bad habit of blowing at each note. Okay, making the sound uneven, the phrasing uneven, and the whole and the whole musical idea uneven, and not being able to to being heard by the uh, audience, which in this case will be a committee. So you want to have a flow, an airflow, totally free, and have a tone just directing. In this case, with a very gentle articulation in those notes that need to be articulated, especially in the slide instrument, in the trombone, okay? In the euphonium, baritone, tuba, you guys have the valves, so you can easily play legato uh, with your valves only, okay? But in the trombone, there are positions that you have to use the tone legato in order to make it sound as equal as the natural legato, okay? Um, when is the, the, the glees produced? The glees is produced when the notes, the written notes are moving on the same direction as the slide, meaning when both are parallel. If two notes are going from top to the, uh, all the way up, from bottom to top, and the slide needs to go from the, all the way from the bottom all the way up, 
those notes are going to be sound lists, okay? It needs to be on the contrary motion to be able to sound in a natural legato. That's how the fixix in the trombone works. So a difference of applying now all these concepts into playing the phrase will be like this. Okay, so when you revise this video again at some point, I want you to make the comparison. Play the first time I played this intro when I play the whole piece, and now play this time after I have incorporated all the concepts that I wanted to incorporate, okay? So the first time I played it is the way you should not play it, okay? I did it on purpose so you hear, so you can make the difference, okay? So the first time uh, is the way it would sound if you do not incorporate any of the topics of the aspects that I tell you, that I told you to incorporate. Okay, oh, and all these steps. Now, after applying all these steps, I gave you the final result of this. Okay, so um, let me see. You have here up to, I'm gonna play it again, just up to the first part of the piece. Okay, so we don't spend the whole time on that. So I hope you guys are able to hear the difference between the two, between the two performances and how I incorporated everything that we talk about in this in these few minutes. Now let's go. Um, let's go to the right of the Valkyries. Okay. Let's go to the right of the Valkyries now. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Okay. All right, so this is the right of the famous right of the Valkyries, okay? We have the first part, okay? The minor section and the major section, okay? There is a distinction that you need to make between the two of them, okay? First of all, the key, okay? You have a minor key first, a minor key version or exposition, and then you have a recapitulation of the same theme, but now you have it in the major key. There needs to be a huge difference between the two. Otherwise, the committee will hear that, okay? And it's very tricky sometimes, okay? So um, with that said, let me get the Rochu out of my way and let me get the Valkyries, okay? So this is the minor part. Okay, make sure you always hit that last A sharp and A sharp uh, in, in, in those sections. That is going to make, that is the landmark of this whole section, the final uh, A sharp, okay? Then you have the major part, okay? 
for Dr. Leon to get his internet back up and running. Uh, if you're interested in playing for Dr. Leon at the end of the section, please identify yourself in the chat and uh, we'll be able to do that on a first come first serve basis, depending on how much time is left after the presentation. And we're back. Loud and clear. Okay, perfect. So, going back to the Valkyries. So, one first thing that we need to make sure that, that we notice is the minor section has an A sharp towards the end. Okay, let me upload, share the screen one more time. Okay, so the minor section has an A sharp only towards the end. Okay. But then the major section has a sharp all over the place, okay? Sometimes this little, uh, this little detail may, um, may become a big glitch in the player's mind, okay? Because you're not thinking of that and you're just going with the flow, all right, hey, and then it's another one, hey, hey, and then all of a sudden, boops, A sharp, okay? Never let that last A sharp take you by surprise. Okay, because it is like that. It's a very surprise, it's, it's a surprising accidental. So why? Because this is basically leading the whole section to the singer section, which is going to be in this section, uh, Brunhilde. You know, she's singing here in minor and then makes the modulation to major towards this area, okay? And now you incorporate that A sharp as a normal note within the entire phrase, okay? Something else that we have to be careful, uh, depending on your instrument, usually they ask the same tenor part to the euphoniums, okay? In some band auditions. So um, make sure that here, you respect and really stick to the counting in this section, okay? Because this section is covered by the fourth trombone and the tuba, okay? So, pom 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 You come back here, okay? So, you need to be singing this again, singing all the time, singing in your head, okay? So, uh, that that I sung to you, okay, that is that is the singer's part. Remember, this is a uh, part of an opera, okay? It's part of a tetralogy, uh, as the, the original ring story of, of, you know, remember that movie the, on the books, The Lord of the Ring? This is the original ring story, okay? And, um, and it's basically very similar uh, stories, not, uh, you know, it's, it's revolving around a ring, but it's not necessarily the same script, okay? It's totally different. But, um, but the, 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 the subject is, is the same one, one ring that rules them all. And, um, and all of this, all this right of the Valkyries is the representation of the God's army. And the God's army happened to be formed by female soldiers, okay? They are all female soldiers. Now, Nowadays, it will be, oh, well, female soldiers, normal, nothing out of the ordinary. But remember, we're talking about Wagner, okay? We're talking about late opera, uh, a romantic opera, which is, uh, it, at that time, it was very uncommon to have a whole army just formed by women, okay? 
So this was really in a, a huge innovation of the time. Therefore, you have to be innovating at the time, every single time you play this piece. So going back, uh, uh, rewinding a little bit towards the towards the Rochu, towards the Marco Bordoni, this is very important that does not become uh, a, a triple kind of song. Ta -ta 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 -ta, ta -ta 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 -ta. That happens a lot. Okay, that this is one of the most common uh, mistaken perform excerpts in the whole world. This excerpt uh, could be the difference between you advancing to a next to a next round or being eliminated right away. Okay, I've heard a lot of thank yous. See you later after people have performed this excerpt. Okay, so. For example, okay, let's go to the major section. Also, be careful with the pickup note, just like the rochu. Okay, before this area, the French horns have the main melody and have also this accompaniment. So the two most important ictus rhythmically talking in the right of the Valkyries are the pickup note and the accent of the downbeats. One, two, three. The accented downbeats are not about the tongue, are about the air and the length of the note. So you need to play these dotted eighth notes, accepted dotted eighth notes, a little bit longer, okay? Fuller in their, in their full value, okay? And a little bit longer in air, not heavy tongue, okay? This is a common mistake. No, okay, air. That way, the phrase is moving forward and it's kept light and going on. Okay, and you need to keep subdividing that in your mind. Okay, so uh, just to end this section now before we go into a, into a round of question and answer, um, your air. Remember how I told you in the Marco Bordoni to have a moving forward, very relaxed air stream. Well, the concept in this type of excerpts needs to be also moving forward, very relaxed, warm, but a little bit faster and pushing forward. Uh, I like to call it more dynamic, okay? A little bit like this. One, two. Okay, I hope you guys are able to hear my air so you hear how I'm approaching that and how I'm not blowing at each note. No, I'm blowing through the phrase, okay? And the tongue is basically just doing the same thing that my finger does when it touch a running water. Okay, so, um, well, I hope this is very helpful uh for um for your performance in these two particular pieces and i hope this helps you at the time of sitting down in a practice room and having a a, a more open approach on how to practice this music to have a successful ending of your practice session when you practice them okay uh so dr Howard, i hand it to you to uh direct the Q&A session, if there is any question, if there is anybody that would like to participate somehow. Uh, so now is the perfect time if you have any questions. They don't have to be trombone specific. They can be uh, low brass, just uh, as a performer. Anything you want to know, because Dr. Lewin has a lot of experience. So feel free to uh, just type your question in the, in the chat box, or you can actually fill out the question form in the Q&A form and we'll answer them. And like we said, if you are interested in just playing, um, 
I have to make you a panelist so that you can access the video and you can play for Dr. Yon as well because we have a few minutes left. So we want to take advantage of this time with this professor. Anybody? There you go. How would you practice with air articulation instead of using a harsh tongue? That is a fantastic question, okay? And uh, I think I touch a little bit about that towards the end, towards the end of the um, of my presentation a few a few seconds ago. How to practice an air articulation instead of using a harsh tongue? Okay, uh, I have different ways of practicing with my air. One of them is using this device called the spirometer. Okay, I place my mouthpiece on the spirometer. Okay. I set up the resistance. I usually like to set up the resistance very high, but for students, I usually recommend to set it up a little bit lower, probably between four and six, okay? First, play a long tone, a long air tone. So first practice this let's say practicing Valkyries, okay, with this. If you notice, when I was playing that rhythm, the ball stayed basically around this area, okay? The idea when you practice with this device is that the ball doesn't go down every single time you blow. The idea is to maintain the blow as high as possible in this area, meaning that your air is constantly hitting the node and moving forward, uh, and you're not blowing at each node, but you're blowing through the phrase. Okay. okay, that is just with air. Once you're able to master that, okay? Once you're able to master that, you need to practice the music, for example. Let's go back to, uh, to Rochu, to Marco Bordoni, okay? First of all, play from the first note with no tongue. Uh -huh. Not tongue at all, okay? I didn't even use my tongue for the first note. Not tongue at all. <sighs> Find that warm sound and that center of the sound with your instrument without the tongue first, okay? One way to, um, to discover that is placing the hand in front of your mouth. Move it up and down, closer and farther, until you find that warm spot in which your air feels the thickest that you can feel. It doesn't feel thin. It actually feels very thick and round. For example, my warmest and thickest area is right here. It's not even all the way to the front. It's not even up. It's, it's probably a little bit lower than the space. Right there is where I direct all my air. That was performed totally without tongue, okay? Then I incorporate the music into that same area of playing. And now I'm going to add and a lighter articulation for the legato articulation, which in this case I use the la 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 la, okay? Instead of ta 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 or da da da, I use la 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 for articulation. La 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 la.
Okay? So I hope you're able to hear a difference. So your air needs to be the one leading the phrase, leading the music, leading the melodic line. You need to use, you need to be able to play music without the tongue at all. Find the center of your air by placing the hand in front of your mouth. Then place your trombone, your mouthpiece in that same area. You could even practice that before putting your trombone up. You could practice that with your mouthpiece. Finding that warm area. And then placing your trombone in that direction. If you're able to hear a, a ring of sound, like, like a bell tone, like a ring going, oh, kind of like a reverberation, like an echo happening around you, you have found the center of your sound. And all you need to do is now incorporate your tone very lightly. Even if you're going to, to make a heart attack, like I never play ta 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 ta. I use even a lighter tone, even if I have to play strong and loud, that's the lightest of the tongue I use for those phrases. Do, 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 do. I use more like a D between a D and a T. Do, 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 do. And make sure that your vocal cord. Uh, your 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 embouchure is not ah, and your and your throat is not open ah or all. Oh, those are very ah. Eh. If you mix the both of them a and o, ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, it's not fully ah, uh, it's not fully o. Oh, it's in between. Ah, uh, fill that area with air, and then use a lighter tongue. That's going to uh, minimize the harshness of the attack to a point that you're going to be able to play very light, very neat, very elegant, and sound very clean, even if you have to play loud. I hope this answered your question. That was uh, Josh. So next question is, uh, what is your favorite piece of music to play? <laughs> it, it depends. It depends on the type of music I'm playing. Uh, um, I, I'm a very diverse musician. I play all over, you know, kind of music. I, I recently recorded a, for a Raisi Jazz Orchestra, which is a, a Latin jazz, but it's not your usual Latin jazz. It's a Latin jazz that makes uh, uh, all the folk and traditional music of all Latin America, not just because the concept of Latin jazz is salsa. And, and this is a Latin jazz that incorporates every single folk music of every single uh, genres in, in, in the entire uh, South America uh, spectrum. Uh, so you're going to hear a lot of pieces in 6, 8, 5, 8, 7, 8, not necessarily only 4, 4 and 2, 4. Um, so um, I love, uh, you know, some of my favorite pieces are, are depending of the spectrum of what we're talking about. If we're talking about orchestral pieces, I love uh, any Mahler symphony, especially Gustav Mahler symphony number no. six. Um, uh, from, the, from the orchestral spectrum, from the uh, soloistic spectrum, from tenor trombone, I love the Grandal, and I also love uh, on bass trombone, I love the U.S. in Concerto for bass trombone. Uh, from tuba pieces, I love the Vaughan Williams. Um, it's a beautiful piece. I also love the John Williams Concerto for tuba. Um, and um, in jazz, I love all the collection of uh, George Roberts collection and uh, Stan Kenton, big band, J.J. Um, Johnson's music. And from band music, I love the compositions from um, uh, Michael Doherty, or uh, uh, I also love the compositions from um, uh, Joel Pocket. He's a, he's a great composer as well for, for music for band. Uh, Frank T. Kelly is another one of my favorites too. And then, you know, from commercial music, uh, you know, there are many. I, I love the music of Chicago, the rock band. Uh, also Earth, Wing and Fire. Um, and most recently, well, I like I like Bruno Mars. I like Justin Timberlake a lot. And um, 
Um, you know, it, as I said, it all depends on the spectrum and, and what we're talking about. So I have many different regarding the genre. Um, I, I'm of the concept that uh, music is only one and there is only good music and bad music. It doesn't matter the genre. Every single genre have good and bad uh, 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 um, uh, results <laughs> on each one of them. Okay, so, um, so great music, there's great music everywhere, luckily. And I like, you know, as much as I can. So uh, anyone in the class want to play for Dr. Leon? This is your last chance today. <laughs> Raise your hand, type in the chat if you want. I'll give it just a sec. Don't be shy. And like I mentioned in the chat box, you do not have to play the excerpts he presented on. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's pretty much a no. Well, thank you, Dr. Leon. If you could stick around for a few minutes, this has been a great session. Uh, thank you for everyone in attendance. Um, make sure you check on the website because we're adding new sessions every single week and this should go through July. So thank you very much and I will see you soon.